Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we covered the theory of Spring Cloud Config Server. In this video, we will develop a custom config server, and this config server will use a GitHub repository to store the properties. So let's get started. We will create a new project, and I will use Spring Initializer plugin of IntelliJ. This is a paid plugin. If you don't have this one, you can use the Spring Initializer, which is the website. This is going to be a Maven project. We will name it config server. We need config server dependency. So let's search that. This is the one. Let's create the project. So the project setup is complete. It has downloaded all the required dependencies. Let's quickly check the pom.xml. Here we have cloud config server which is coming from Spring Cloud and that's the only dependency in this project. Let's go to the application.properties and we will provide some required configurations. The first one is we will provide it a name. We don't want the default name, we can change it. So I will name it my config server. Then we will change the port and 8181. So when we run the config server, it will run with this port 8181. As I said, we will use a GitHub repository to store the configurations. I have already created one GitHub repository that I will use in this demo. So this is the repository. This is the demo repository, which is a private repository. You can have a public repository, a private or even a local repository. That's fine. The only thing is when we are creating a repository, we need to provide access in some form. It could be username, password, username or access token. So I'm going to use access token in this case. And if you are using GitHub, you can generate the access token from the settings. So if you go to the settings here under developer settings, you can find the option personal access tokens. And this is the beta feature fine grained tokens. But here we can create the access token specific to a repository. So create a repository generate the access token copy that access token and we will use that access token when we provide the details of this github repository going back to the repository this repository has a single properties file application dot properties and this file has a single key some dot key with value some hyphen value and we will try to read this property when we develop the client application spring config client application as of now we are working on server in order to provide the details of this github repository we need to use some properties we need to provide some properties so let's go back to the application.properties file and use that property which is spring.config spring.cloud.config.server get and username the second property is password and the last one is uri so first provide the URI. Let me copy the URI of my repository. Then we will provide the username. So I will provide mine. And instead of passing the password, I will use the access token that I created for this repository. You need to provide your access token if you are following along. Okay. So we have the required configuration, required properties. We have provided the details of that GitHub repository the server port and the application name. The next thing we need is we will go to the main class and we need to add the annotation enable config server. This annotation will configure the project for cloud config server. That is the auto configuration of Spring Boot. So let me start the application. So the config server is up. It is running on this port 8181. Let's go to the browser and see if this application is running as you can see we got an error we know the server is running but we cannot access it so how do we access the data how do we access the properties via this config server well when we run a config server it automatically exposes some endpoints that a client would query to read the configuration and we can find these endpoints in the documentation of config server here we can see the http service of config server exposes these endpoints and it follows a naming convention it starts with the application name 
then the profile and then an optional level now if you don't provide a profile by default it's always the default profile talking about this property application this is the name of client application not the name of config server so if you go back to the application properties of config server we define this name here my config server but that's not the name which is used here this is the name of client application that means if we have two microservices order and transaction then for order microservice the url would be slash order slash the name of profile and the optional level and for transaction api it would be slash transaction slash name of the profile and here you can see the example so who is the name of client application so the url would look like port of the application port of the config server actually in this case 8181 slash name of the application foo and this is the name of profile if we don't have a profile it is default so we can try a similar url to read the application dot properties data we have localhost colon 8181 and if you go back to the github repository here we can see the name is application dot properties file it means we can simply pass the name of application as application slash if you notice we have not provided any profile name here in that case we can simply pass the default profile and if we hit enter and we got some response and in this response we can find the key or the property that's in application dot properties some dot key and some hyphen value and that's the same endpoint or a similar endpoint that a client would call in order to read properties from this config server that we will develop later so we have successfully developed a config server it is up and running using this github repository now in the next video when we develop the config client we will understand the name of this properties file in a much better way because name of this properties file depends on the name of the microservice and the profile of the microservice so it could vary right now this is a very simple example so we have just created a simple properties file application.properties which depends on the default values that's it for now that's it for this video see you in the next video thanks for watching